Hello, yes, late Monday stream indeed. Got distracted with a bunch of other stuff. So, here we are. Yeah, I got, I got my new, my new organizing module today. So, I don't know if this can show. It cannot, well, you can. So now my paint drawer module is over here because I have another one. Hey, Keegan, how are you? So now, now I have a, a shelf that's ready for the new Chimera colors. And I have a nice new drawer thing for my pro acrylics and the random Citadel paints. And then I got some camera stuff. Oops, I don't want to remove painting. That would be bad. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's because my, my monitor stand has a really fat footprint. Um, so the... Yeah. New camera's great. Worth, worth it. And I was... I got present that wasn't wrapped so I messed around with it which is why we're streaming late um, got a flash for my camera finally because I I never wanted to get one of these or ask for one because they're way too expensive and then I found when I was buying my sister Christmas presents last year because she was getting into film photography a used camera people which is where I got this camera from and then also the flashes are like less than a third of the price they are new and this one looks brand new it's great love it so i'm a, I'm a happy camper what, what game are you playing keegan 
playing the Elden Rings. I think today we're gonna paint some leather stuff or at least get started on the leather stuff. Um, black brown somewhere else I guess. That color choice. Sheldon's Wing. I have not heard of that game. What's that about? For once I've hit my stand and everything before starting to stream today. So that's good. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> that's a fun typo. <laughs> Sheldon's way. <laughs> okay, good stuff, good stuff. There we go. Oh, just you, you, you typing in the wrong thing, just completely. Oh, okay, got it. Well, where are you in Sheldon's wing? I was definitely debating playing some of that tonight, but I don't know. I felt like doing a little painting. Let's see if I figured I'd hop on. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, I'm still very much on my first playthrough. Thirty-two hours in at the Atolls Plateau. Even though I always want to call it the Atlas Plateau, but I think it's Atolls. Made it over to the capital outskirts and was like, nope, not ready for this yet. <laughs> so I'm gonna go find something else to do next time. Nice, yeah. Yeah, I've got, I've, uh, there's a ton of people I know that are playing. So far I've been doing it solo, uh, outside of like using the summons and such. So. I haven't been struggling too, too much just yet, which is good. Sorry that I'm off camera. I'm trying to see. Thanks. Yeah. Definitely need some adjustments on the purple and the green and the skin's definitely not done yet, but I'm just trying to get everything mostly there and then uh, we'll work on refining things after that. Because I don't want to spend forever on something and then realize, oh, I don't actually like how this all looks. <laughs> Yeah, I'm down for that. I know Ben was talking about doing one. Um, maybe I'll just have to bring it up and say like, hey, uh, maybe our Friday or Saturday or something. We do a paint and hang. 
Also, it looks like the freak weather in the Pacific Northwest continues. So we had the hail in Seattle. Um, uh, it's two days ago, Saturday. And then it looks like last night it snowed in Portland, which is wild. <laughs> it's April. It rarely snows in Portland to begin with, let alone in April. But I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's not. You know. Everything falling apart. Right. Right. Oh, before I get too into painting, uh, this is what I worked on on stream or after the stream yesterday. This boy again. So I think on stream yesterday. I think I did this after the stream. If I didn't, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but sawed off the extra plastic art and then smoothed everything down um, just to get a rough sand so that it's not I mean, overhanging too much. It's not perfect yet, but I just, because I'm going to be sculpting more and I'll overhang, so I'll need to do more sanding. But I just wanted close enough and then started building out mass here for the steps. So I think the next step uh, is going to be to get the steps mostly sculpted and then figure out the door. Because once I figure out the door, then I can figure out the arch and everything around it. So um, yeah, just little baby steps. The back looks super ugly right now because I was taking the epoxy sculpt and smoothing it out with water and just drips everywhere. <laughs> Oops, wrong way. One day I'll get it right. Yeah, just trying to take it slow, learn from my mistakes on other sculpting projects. Try to do things iteratively, etc., etc. Was fine today. I was supposed to run an interview and then the candidate never showed up, so I did not run an interview. <laughs> and then helped people figure out run settings in their software, so that was fun. Good stuff. There was a day to skip out on interviews. I've had it happen a few times in the past. Kind of just, usually it's just like a miscommunication from the recruiter. Like the majority of the time, that's what it is. Um, we'll find out what it was. The recruiter, recruiter for this candidate was not online during the interview because they're in. Europe. So I was, I was shadowing someone for this interview because I'm learning the whole interview process for a new company. He was like, I don't really know what to do. I was like, maybe try messaging a recruiter? I don't know. Good stuff. And then we chat a little bit. Yeah. 
Yeah. How am I a cheater? Oh. <laughs> Dummy. Go back to your TikToks. Come on, go and focus, please. Uh huh. I feel like one of the reasons why seventy five mil models are the hardest for me. Pain is they're very tall <laughs> compared to like like busts like are generally pretty short and like they're chunky and it's easy to kind of get a hold of and get all to all the details. The 75 mil I just feel like they're just tall enough that like it can be kind of awkward to get your brush where you want it to be. I guess it's also been a hot second since I painted, painted an actual 75 mil figure. I guess Yova was the last one. And that was November. I guess Winter Solstice Lucy is close, but She's a little bit shorter. Because I mean, I, yeah, like it was Yova, then I did Octavius and Winter Social Lucy, and then I did Kingdom Death Core, and then Helen, and then a bunch of busts. But I think like, 75 has always been like this scale that I've just kind of struggled with a little bit more. I like it a lot, but. It's hard. It's just big enough that you have to like start doing a lot more detail work, but it's still small enough that that detail work is hard to do. Yeah, the bubble piece is looking really nice. Oh, whoops, is that skin? Yeah, I think that's skin. We're done goofed. Well, here we got skin colors on here. So let's see if we can uh, scoop that in. Good thing I didn't clean off my palette. But also I don't think that's gonna be super visible when the cloak is actually there. So we're fine. It's fine, everything's fine. I don't know if it's being picked up by the mic, but Poe is currently kneading the couch. He likes to do that a lot.
Yeah. Okay, good stuff. We're just gonna paint this. I was debating about keeping this not brown for now, but it'll be some sort of leather, so. Start thinking about varying things up a little bit. What else is going on today? I think that's mostly it. New paint module. I got some, so I, uh, the paint module I got was from Hobby Zone and their US distributor like jacked up the price pricing for shipping a lot. So I was looking at other sellers and I realized that PK Pro, which is in Germany, it only cost, uh, cause the cost of the module is a lot cheaper like shipping was more, but the modules significantly cheaper. It was like half the price. So altogether it was like five bucks more to get it from PK Pro than it was from the US distributor. And I could also get some other stuff in the order and save on shipping. Um, so I picked up some, uh, a couple of Juiva things that they had in stock that I can't find anywhere else. That I've been eyeing for a while some new little sculpting tools to mess around with. So I got this crazy dental scraping tool, basically. I've got two pointy ends, so I can stab my models, I guess. Uh, and something that I thought was different from what it was, but should still be good. Two new color shapers that are like firm and flat chip and one's another cone tip because I have some cheaper ones that keep breaking and I thought it was double ended color shippers but it has like a little wire tool on the other end so we'll see if that's any useful. Let's see if I can grab the fun juila bit that I got. Yes. So if you don't know what juila they make really cool um, like ceramic 
um, slash clay bits, uh, like bricks and tiles and these column things in a wide variety of scales. So they also make up to like 1 24th, which is what uh, 75 mil figures are. Uh, so these are like little column bits. And then the nice thing about them being clay or porcelain is you can like actually smash them and they break realistically. So, big fan of their stuff. Uh, Secret Weapon used to distribute them. But of course Secret Weapon is no more. So, Noble Knight carries some of their stuff. Um, there's an Aussie seller called BNA Model World. That looks promising. And shipping from Australia to the States is not terrible. At least cost wise, I'm sure it will take forever. Yeah. So that's our dose of retail therapy. Yeah, sorry. It's generally good, but every now and then I accidentally shift over this way. I don't go out of focus. Uh, so I just need to remember to keep it in the, the hot zone and I'll be good. From Etsy. I don't know what the doll is, but uh, that just is really fun. That was, I guess, speaking about 75 mil, that was my first 75 mil figure. And I think the first figure I ever used airbrush on, because uh, I used it to prime it and then I used it on the dress a little bit. Was also the mini where I learned you should not use super thin super glue on minis. Otherwise, you'll be very sad. Because it gets everywhere. And for some reason, I took me took me two times on that mini to learn that lesson. Because uh, I. I was using it during assembly and like it got all over the front of the dress. So I was like, oh, that's great. Um, so there was like little crusty bits on it. And then <laughs> I was mostly able to clean up. And then I was like, oh, okay, well I, I did the head in a sub assembly time to glue it on. Let's just grab this super thin super glue and glue the head on to this painted body. I'm sure nothing will go wrong, oh whoops. Absolute disaster. So, super thin super glue is great for terrain, but keep it away from your minis. stick. Oh no, where is the pokey stick? There's the pokey stick hiding under the pallet. Oh, that doll. Got it. Okay. Got it. Bloodborne was the Souls game that I got the farthest into before Elden Ring. 
I still, I, I have not actually beaten a Souls game. I appreciate them for what they are, but I get to a point where I'm just like, I've had enough. <laughs> I'm enjoying just kind of taking my time with Elden Ring, playing it when I want to and putting it down when I don't. Yeah, it, it was definitely the one that clicked with me the most. I just, I always reach a point where I'm just like, I don't want to learn the patterns. <laughs> but I really liked how uh, the aggression in it worked. I thought that was cool. Like how the game rewards you for being aggressive rather than sitting back. and weathered and we'll go over it with some glazes and weather it again and repeat until we're happy Yes, uh, so I showed you earlier with the plinth uh, for the little diorama that I sanded yesterday. I really hate sanding. <laughs> if I ever am able to get a house, the first thing I'm probably going to buy, or the first two like tools I will buy are going to be a bandsaw and a belt sander or disc sander, some sort of sanding station. So I can just press things up against it and it'll sand it nice and even. And then a bandsaw so I can easily just cut stuff off.
my friend uh, took a uh, wood turning class over the weekend, and they went and bought a lathe after it, <laughs> which is exciting because they want to make plinths and such, so that should be cool. And they actually paint minis, so they will make plinths that are not gigantic like a lot of American plinths do, or plinth makers do. Okay, getting there. I'm pushing these highlights very high because again, they're going to be toned down when we do go do some glazes and such. Also, a, a different friend uh, messaged me before streaming today. Said they finally started watching Ranking of Kings. And they're only 10 minutes into the first episode and they already know that they're gonna be ugly crying by the end. And I'm like, yep, it's great. It's fantastic. 10 out of 10 show. Everybody should go watch Ranking of Kings. Yeah, Moon Knight's been like it's 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 very low key. I kind of like that it's not at least so far like connected to anything else in Marvel. Like it's a nice break to just have something on its own, and I hope it stays that way. I hope they don't like shoehorn something in, but I'm sure they will. Um, but yeah, it's fun to just watch Oscar Isaac be a a big old himbo. It's great. Yes, yeah. Let's see, I want purple. Hey Mini Scribbler, how are you doing? How's your afternoon? Should be afternoon. I guess maybe it's early evening at this point in us. Yeah, yeah, this is quite a bit later. Um, I don't know, I, I was dilly-dallying, messing with some other things today, and then I was sitting down in the evening. I was like, I want to paint. I don't want to paint a marble thing, I want to paint the lady. So I figured I'd just do a, sh a short little stream today. Probably only gonna be on for 20 or 30 more minutes. Maybe a little longer, we'll see. But yeah. So we're just gonna try to knock out this leather a little bit. But we'll see. Uh, I think so, yeah. 
For now, at least. Uh, they're definitely not, like, done done. Like, I need to go back and push some things on the purple. But, like, I don't, I don't hate it. It's fun. Gotta... It, it, it's just the new hot things to be the Joker, right? Even the, the fucking dinosaur in the new Jurassic World. They, they said they wanted it to be the Joker. Just this part? It could be a very, like, uh, yeah, I mean, that's like, a, I think, like, the thing with elves, right? They're pretty androgynous. Andro androgynous? But yeah. Looks very different on its own than when it is all together. I'm still kind of going back and forth. I was debating painting the hair tonight, but I'm still kind of going back and forth. On if I want it to be, because I kind of, I do kind of like this white that's kind of going on right now. Um, there we go. Uh, but I mean, it could also just go to like the typical blonde. We're not going to do red. We've done enough red hair lately. <laughs> so, and I think anything too dark would look kind of weird. So like a brown or a black, like a light brown might be good. Yeah. But like a, like my color brown would, I think be too dark. Um, but yeah, like maybe maybe like a dirty blonde or something could be good. Um, but we'll get there. We'll get there. A very dirty blonde. Okay. A very a nasty blonde. Okay. on mini mini related thing oh nice which which ones did you get the expansion set or just uh one of the other sets um but on the subject i guess of chimeras and minis and buying things uh big child creators is having their easter sale today this week because easter sunday um which i was reminded that easter is sunday because uh Every year, my grandma sends my dog a new bunny toy. Uh, last year, she accidentally sent him four of the same ones, so I still have a bunch from last year. <laughs> um, but he got, a, he got a new one yesterday. He was unsure of it, but he was playing with it this morning, so it's all good. Um, yeah, well, there's, there's four sets. So there's the core set. Um, which is like the sing the pure pigments. There's the there's the the never without the Kartachi set, which has Kartachi red, and then there's the Bizarski set. Um, this one, and then there's the new expansion set, which is okay. There's good colors in it, but I feel like they behave a little weirdly still. So. Um, but I've heard some people say they behave better than theirs, so maybe it's just like another case of a botch batch or something. I'm waiting for a US distributor to get individual pots in stock so I can 
pick up one and uh, see if it's any better than what I got. So, um, hey, they're gonna have a Kickstarter in nine days? Nine days. Um, I guess eight days, eight and a half days or something since you're in, you're in a house. Um, I forget what time of day it launches, but okay, have fun with the boy. But yeah, the, uh, the Kickstarter is like dark fantasy miniatures and three new paint sets. They're gonna be the they're gonna be mixes. Uh, expansion is up. They did a pre-order at the end of last year. Um, hey, Necromancer, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, I think the expansion set might be sold out because there's they might still be fulfilling pre-orders. But uh, Big Child Creatives did have it in stock, so if you're looking to, I don't know if they still do. They had a bundle with a figure with the new set. I think that's sold out, but I don't know if the paint set itself is sold out. Um, I guess we could go check. Let's go, let's go look. Yeah, a little bit, just Chimera in general. Um, Mini Scribbler said he just got, or they just got, I don't, yeah. Uh, uh, a bunch of the new paints or new paint set from Chimera. I think so, yeah. Uh, okay, that's good to know, it's this one, I think it, yeah, I think on their website it said colors of nature, but it's got this nice little guy that shows you how everything mixes with the old set, um, like I said, they're, they're good pigments, but they just kind of I don't know, they behave a little weirdly. Like, you really have to mix them with other paints. Um, but yeah, on the Kickstarter, they teased one set already. Uh, it's Rockland Studios. He has a paint set, and there's, like, some lovely pinky flesh tones and some really nice dark blues. Um, ooh! Well, that's, that's like... Cause I think... US dollar to US dollar is like roughly Euro to US dollar. Like it's like 80% or something like that. Or like 80% of the value. Um, so that's what, like 110 US, somewhere in that ballpark? Yeah, 110, 120. Um, yeah, they were cheaper for the pre order, they said, and they said they would go up in price. And that's good to hear, Necromancer. Looking forward to seeing what you do. I know Keegan was talking about maybe trying to get a, a paint night in the dirty paint water. And I know Benny mentioned doing one a while ago, so hopefully we can all hang out. It'd be good to do so. It's been a while. Base. Uh, uh, yeah, he's doing like the uh, he was doing the monster thing, right? It's for Chimera, correct? Because it looked like they're gonna release some 38 millimeter versions of their older figures, like there's the dude with the knives. Knife hands, the Edward, Edward Scissor hands looking dude. Um, the the ones that I am most interested in so far is the Chaos Knight looking dude that Angel did a video of. 
uh, this past weekend. The Paladin Lady, because she's got cool armor. And I think you're, you might be in Eric's Discord, but if you haven't checked it lately, Eric Swinson, he's working on the box art for one. I won't say what it is because it's, I don't think he's supposed to technically show it, but this is just real cool. It's real cool. Yeah. Also, I guess tangentially, uh, Limbo's Kickstarter finally opened up the Pledge Manager. So I'm holding off completing my pledge until I know what's in the Chimera Kickstarter a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I saw. I saw that on his Instagram. Mm, that's not the one I want. This is the one I want. Nice. I, I think I saw your whip on some Discord. I don't remember which one, uh, but the lion dude. Yeah. Do you know, did you get any of the, the 35 mil ones from that Kickstarter? Someone was saying that like the material felt odd and the way they were describing it made me think it was CO cast. So I was wondering if it was actually CO cast or not. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'd rather freehand for than uh, have it be sculpted, I think, like completely. Hey, Super Voxmas, thanks for the raid. I'll give you a second to get past the ad wall if you start behind that. Hello, what were you doing tonight? TFT, is that Team Fortress 2 or is there something new that's TFT? Thanks. Yeah, this is, uh, she has, she has a top half. Um, okay, team fight tactics. I guess, yeah. I guess it has been a, uh, uh, been a while since Team Fortress 2. I think I was looking that up, the, uh, came out in the orange box, which was, uh, 2007. Uh, cause I was, I don't know what spirit it, but we were talking about, like, best years in video games. And it seems like the sevens are generally pretty good. Like 2007 was a banger of a year for video games. And then 2017, also A+. plus. So excited for 2027, whenever that, or whatever comes out for that, I guess. <laughs> Team Fight Tactics sounds familiar, but I don't know if I know what it is off the top of my head. But I've definitely heard it thrown around. Yeah, we're just paint painting some leather tonight. Chill, late stream. Not gonna stay on for too, too long. 
Uh, okay, that's where I've heard of it. Got it. Got it. I have played one game of League of Legends, and the only reason why I did that is because I interviewed at Riot, and I was like, I should, I should know what this game is. I'm not good at MOBAs. I don't have the, the skill for that. Yeah. All right, Keegan. Yeah, looking forward to seeing how that Bloodborne model comes out. Have a nice evening. Go get some rest. Yeah, is teamfight tactics like the battle chess thing, or is that another thing? That's another thing, I think. Ignore me. I'm just a boomer, I guess, now. It's sad. Yeah, they basically, okay. Hey, I was close on something for once. Um, yeah, this is just a miniature that we're painting, just for fun. She's got a base over here. Very, 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 very simple. We'll be putting some plants and stuff on it as we work on it. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's a battle chest kind of thing. Got it? Interesting. You've not been into any sort of like competitive multiplayer games in a while. Uh, before I got into mini painting, I was very into Destiny. Um, but they, they, I, I dropped off around when they did like the whole Battle of the Forge stuff. Um, thanks, yeah, so a lot of, a lot of my, my airbrushing, or, yeah, a lot of my blending is with the airbrush, um, so, like, my general process is, like, layer up with different paints and then glaze over everything, um, with either the airbrush or the, the hairy brush, um, and yeah, that's just kind of a process that I've been working on over the last year or so. I like a lot. Do you paint miniatures yourself or mostly video game stuff? Like, did you get into 3D printing and kind of paint all those as well? Yeah, it's, it's definitely like, uh, it's definitely, I feel like miniature painting is one of those things that like in concept is, you think is a lot easier than it actually is. You're like, oh, well it's already, like it's, it's volume. So you just have to lay down the paint and it'll look good, right? Like you just lay down one color and like everything will take care of the rest, but it's not the case because it's a smaller scale, so if you want it to look good, you have to influence the light yourself, right? Nice. Uh, have you looked at, uh, since you were talking about League, let me... <laughs> uh, sorry, if friend misses me. Uh, one of my, my Aussie friends uh, posted that they're they're gonna read Jane Eyre, and uh, uh, said they got someone spoiled it for them, and I was teasing them. Um, nom nom figures, uh, these guys. Here I'm gonna be boomer again. Um, 
but they they are their patreon and they do all sorts of all sorts of the animus and uh they have they just the reason why i brought them up is they have this awesome piece with echo from arcane slash league of legends and it has jinx as well so they got that i believe you get them all for free if you subscribe to their patreon and then they have uh vi smashing a drugged up whatever the heck he is um yeah really cool stuff um kind of on the gray area of like is this okay in terms of copyright but whatever who cares um live your life there was also where was where was the one that well i like commander shepherd um i was always a femme shep player um but let me let me continue being boomer for a second Where's, where's the, there it is, maybe, Asuka, yeah, focus, from Evangelion. It's lots of cool stuff, makes me wish I had a 3D printer, yet another reason to keep hoping to get a house. <laughs> but yeah. It's just, uh, one of the reasons I like this hobby so much is it's just a lot of cool figures. There's something for everyone. And there's all sorts of different aspects to the hobby itself, right? Like you can approach it in a wide variety of ways and it's cool. looking so let's see what we can do about that yeah I mean that just comes with with like everything it comes with time right um, it's like this is my primary hobby so I sink like a lot of time into it um, like years I, I keep my, my first mini on my desk He's very dusty, so pardon the dust. This is where I started, uh, just about three years ago now. April, uh, 2019. Got into it for a D&D. &D. Did the old, did the old base coat wash and that's about it. Slap some non oil on that bad boy, call him good. Um... Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I had I had help help because I like I used to like draw and uh, that kind of stuff before I got into miniature painting. Um, so that kind of helped with like getting brush control down. Um, this is definitely like the kind of art form that most clicked with me. Uh, yeah, that's that's metallics on this guy. Um, these were. Uh, Citadel Retributor Armor and the Steel one. I don't remember which one. Uh, I yeeted them, I think, because I, I I replaced them with... Uh, these are my metallics of choice when I do true metallics now. Um, the Vallejo metal, metal color. This is great stuff. I do also like scale color metallics for when I do metallics. They have some nice ones, but we'll be painting non-metallic on here, but just as an example. So here's a recent piece that we did. Uh, this is non-metallics. Um, I've just been enjoying kind of exploring non-metallic metal. It's been fun to paint. Yeah, good stuff. Okay. Yeah, I'll still, I'll still paint true metallic metals on like D&D &D figures, um, just to kind of keep stretching that muscle. 
And I think at some point I should try uh, True Metallics on the display piece again, because I don't think I've done that in a very long time. Thanks. I think the thing with like non-metallic metal is can be scary, um, but I think like good true metallic metal is just as hard as good non-metallic metal because they're they're hard in different ways. But I think like like passable like does this look like metal? Then yeah, like true metallic metal is a little bit easier to start off with. Um, I think the main pitfall for me when getting into non-metallic metal was worrying too much about blending. Like I blend things too smoothly, too quickly, and uh, non-metallic metal to make it look convincing is often about kind of harsher transitions. Um, so I think switching to the uh, sketch and refine kind of style helped me realize that. of the stream uh, weathering this leather just take it easy and have a little bit of fun telling me to take a moment and reflect on the day. But we've already been doing that.
Okay, getting to where I want it to be. Need a little bit more weathering on this thing. Let's see how that looks with the uh, top on. Like that. Okay, let's let's work on some of the other little leather bits a little bit, uh, just for a couple minutes. We'll work on this strap that's on our torso. I think I want that to be a much lighter leather with a bit of orange in it. So let's get it out. Not you. Yes, you. Okay, there's that. Uh, let's put that back in. Oops, sorry, out of focus. Gotta shift it over again. one if it yeah let's see if we like this one as the same color or not
I think with leathery bits, uh, similar to metal bits if you have like multiple leather things on a figure, it's good to add some variety in the color. Just like if you have the metal things, it's good to have a couple different kinds of metal on a figure. But not absolutely everything has to be different. <laughs> I learned that the hard way when painting Merlin and Necklace of Camelot, who's basically just all leathers and furs. He's got a bunch of different bits on him, and they're all just natural materials. And you're like, well, I don't want everything to just be brown. <laughs> so you, I don't know, it gets very tedious very quickly. Trying to make everything like a different shade of brown. Hey, Sammy, how are you doing? I know it's quite late. Uh, I, won't, I won't be on for too, too much longer. We're just gonna get a good start on these leather straps and then we'll probably call it an evening. Just wanted to do a little painting today. Yeah, hope you had a nice Monday. It's, a, it's an actual salamander, right? Because it's the, 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 I'm blanking on the name of the company, but it's not like a, a 40k salamander, right? <laughs> Yeah, Cobra mode. There we are. And it was like, I was running through wild animal names and brain died. <laughs> Environmental damage? Were you doing it in oils or something? Or did it just get like a bunch of dust on it or something?
Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. That happens. I'm trying to be better about not like priming too many things way too early because I'll just get a bunch of dust on them and I'll have to either like try to blow it all off or uh, wash it off and then hope that the primer stays or something. And then I got my little shelf thing, my little cubby thing for storing things that I'm working on, but big things don't really fit in there. How's your, uh, your Chimera, your Chimera only challenge going? Did he mention in the dirty pink water that he was having trouble with the Chimeras? Ah, okay. Okay-ish, <laughs> not great because of the damage, but hopefully the painting today was going good. Ah, uh, yeah. So I think one thing about the Chimeras is like since they're so pigment dense, dense they're, they're relatively delicate. That's just something to keep an eye out for. And varnishing is your friend. Yeah, I definitely used to have that issue a lot where, um, <laughs> I had a bad habit of dropping my well paint, like my almost painted models into my wet palette towards the end. <laughs> Speaking of Merlin again, I did that with Merlin. And I had to go and like run and wash everything off and hope that nothing like comes off. Good times. That is one of the reasons why the wet palette is not directly on uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad it's not just me. Um, yeah, that's, that's why the palette now sits over to the side because I used to have the palette like under the mini as I painted it. Um, but hey, this gives a somewhat clearer background. It's at least more color neutral. And be, I don't drop it in there. And see, it's a little more ergonomic because I don't have to like move my shoulder this way. It's now it's directly in there, so it's good for the shoulder and all that. Yada yada yada. Ergonomics. Are you getting like uh, grittiness, I guess is one way to describe it? I 
And if so, are you primarily using water to thin it? Okay, I would highly recommend using some mediums to thin it in addition to just water if you're not already using mediums. Um, likewise, like if you want to use glazes with Chimera, I highly recommend using glaze medium rather than just water too. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, do you have like... Besides it like being gritty, does it look? Uh, do the the pigments in it look uniform? Does that make sense? Okay, I haven't used contrast medium. I mostly use like the magic mix stuff. Um, I find that helps quite a bit. Um, but yeah, it's really it's really easy to kind of thin the chimeras a little too much. Um, And then they kind of get like this grittiness quality to it. But I've, no I've mostly noticed that with their uh, single pigment paints, the uh, the mixes uh, have generally been pretty great. Okay, I actually haven't used the satin medium too much. I should mess around with that more. I do like the Chimeras, but I worry that like their QC is not great. And I think that's why everyone has wildly different experiences with them. Because I remember my first set of the core, I had some color, like the, all the warm colors, like it seemed like the pigments weren't ground well. Um, so I got that replaced and then everything's been great since then. So like, that's why I'm like trying to figure out what's going on with the expansion. Like, are these just like how these pigments behave or um, is it like a bung set or did it freeze or something in transit because it was really cold around that time. Um, yeah, I think, I think what I would say is like, leave it a little thicker than you might first think. Um, Cause it dries, it always like, it, yeah, it dries. <laughs> It'll dry pretty smooth. Um, even if it feels a little bit thicker than your Vallejo. I'm not gonna worry about this bag too much right now. I think we're gonna do some stuff with it. Oh, best followers. Remove the space, don't mind if I do. Whoops. Okay, I think the other thing is like, you, you really gotta, you gotta mix the bejeebus out of them. Um, like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, but yeah, I would say keep giving some try, just, uh, try, try some different things with them. I don't know. <laughs> Trying to think of like what other advice to give on using them. But.
guess. Yeah, maybe like try some flow aid with them as well. If like maybe you feel like it's too thick. Um, yeah, the phthalo green's a really nice color. Uh, phthalo green's like a somewhat transparent pigment itself. Um, not super transparent, but a little bit more than normal. So that's why it's nice for kind of getting some glazes and such. Also like some NMM gold kind of stuff, or yeah, I would imagine so with the yellow ochre. Actually, I'm probably gonna have gold in the expansion set. This. So they have like what to mix with what for different things. Here we can zoom out a little bit. Um, so they come with this nice booklet it covers the core and the expansion. So there's their stuff for um, and then have gold, which is handy. A lot of these colors are in the expansion set, unfortunately, but the violet and uh, warm yellow and cold yellow and white are at least in the core. Uh, but they do use that dark ochre, which I need to play around a little bit with, play around with a little bit more. probably play around with those some on this model once we get to that part. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can get this side thing a little bit nicer. Yay! This was the one that was busted-ish, right? Or just like, first time setting up. Oh, okay. Nice. I mean, I would definitely suggest starting out with like the usual things people suggest, which is like priming and varnishing, just to get a feel for it and then like get a feel for cleaning it and such. Um, and then yeah, go from there. Try out some base coats and 
Xanathals. Wait, you've had one for a year without using it, and then three still without using it? Like three airbrushes, or three years? Yeah, I somehow lucked out and like all my bits have just been compatible. I don't know. I guess because I just went a lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, somehow my master's airbrush compressor had the right bits to connect to a lot of. Um, so that was nice. And hello, Crypt Shadow. How are you doing? We are just about to wrap up so that I don't stay up too late. Am I just about? I think I mean. Sure. Now. Uh, yeah, let's put her back together. We still have her gloves and such, but we can tackle that another day. Also, that strap goes up and over, so actually that's... We're not done just yet. Yeah, so do you have like a, a little um, readout on your compressor? I would show... down on the floor and I don't want to move the camera to point at the floor so I will not show it. What do I have? <laughs> I've got an MAS-TC-40T. Like when you're using it, like mine will like, um, what, what, what did I say or? Oh, that's just my, my voice. Sometimes I talk like that cause it's fun. I'm, I'm from, I'm from the South, so it's okay, I can do it, and it's not offensive. Just wrapping up. 
But I forgot about this part and I want it to be close enough. Okay, that's close enough. Well, I, I mean, yeah. It's, it's just a nasally voice. Anyways. There we go. Getting there. Got the leather, most of the leathery stuff done. So, well, what do we got left? We, I mean, we've got touch-ups everywhere, right? Nerd voice 2.0. It's okay, I'm a nerd, so it's not offensive, right? For uh, hour forty four minutes, we got we got a good chunk of leather done, so I'm happy with that. Um, so we still got her gloves and gauntlets, her bow, her quiver, her hair, uh, all the little jewelry bits. She's got earrings, her forehead pendant, and this thing down here. Um, the metally bits on everything, her boots. I'm thinking the boots and the gauntlets will be doing together in a session or part of a session. And she also has this dagger here. Um, yeah, happy with how this is coming along. I'm, I'm liking the colors. I like the purple green's a little ostentatious, but it's fun. Um, I'm thinking we'll get some gold in there, go all the way with the kind of royal accent kind of stuff. Um, yeah. I think, especially if I go back in and push some of the highlights a little bit, and there's some like inconsistencies down here that I'm not huge on, um, so we'll touch those up, and I think I think I'll pull together. And then the green, uh, I want to add some texture into that, and I think that'll make things pop. But yeah, happy with it. It's going along nicely. Yeah, this little lady. I'll probably work on at some point this week. I haven't gotten my shipping notification for the rest yet, so still time to finish the three of them, right? Right. Anyway, so let's put these away. And there we are. So thank you all very much for watching and hanging out and chatting. Yeah, I, I'm glad I didn't leave it green. Uh, I, I was dumb for painting it green in the first place. I should have realized green outer cloak green inner thing would have been kind of silly. Uh, so, anyways. Uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. Hope that the Chimera's paints start working for you, Sammy. And wish you the best of luck on your airbrushing. If you run into any issues, maybe you can try and debug things on stream or something. That'd be fun. Um, yeah, let's see real quickly if there's anyone online to go raid. I know JT was on, Drax is on. Um, oh, what are you doing, Bluetooth? Uh, yeah, I'll, we'll go raid. Let's go raid JT. Let's hope he's not about to end. I know he's been streaming for a little bit. Um, but if he is, well, hopefully he goes and rage Drax or someone. Um, but yeah, thank you guys. Uh, I don't have anything tomorrow, so it's going to be another, do I feel like streaming tomorrow or not kind of thing. So if I see you tomorrow, great. Otherwise I'll see you on Friday. I don't know why I'm thumbs up down here. Like you can see it. There we go. You can see my nasty hands that are all messed up right now. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We're going to go raid. See ya. Bye. <laughs>